Hi there, this is Sean with a book review. In this video, we're discussing a novel by Robert Goddard. Goddard is one of my favorite authors of all time, and I don't know why I've taken so long to do a review on one of his novels. But this novel is one of his latest, I think published in 2021. It's called The Fine Art of Invisible Detection. So did this novel stand up to the expectations I have of Goddard Let's find out. Well, like all Goddard books, the plot was complex. It had a lot of elements, a lot of twists and turns, very fast, well written. Characters were also well written for most of the characters, I should say, but it's the main character in this novel that's a standout. And probably in this case, the only character I found memorable and the only character I really did enjoy, which surprised me, because in many Goddard novels, I enjoy most of the characters. The plot starts off in Japan, and Amuko Wada, who's our main character, is an assistant to a private detective. The reason she is asked to go to England is because one of their clients is meant to meet a man in England. She can't go, so Amuko's asked to be her representative, or asked to actually impersonate her, to be more exact. When Amuko gets to England and goes to the meeting place, the man doesn't turn up, he's a no-show. Then Amuko finds out that her boss is killed, so straight away she's left with a choice. Does she stop the investigation, go back home, or does she keep going? She chooses to keep going, and the main reason at that point she does so is because at that moment the case involves something to do with sarin gas and her husband in the novel was one of the victims of the sarin gas attack in Japan. So that throws us, the reader, into this story and it's quite quick from there. It really doesn't let off the pace and the character Amuko drives this story very well. She follows some leads in England then sets off to Iceland as the story takes her there and in each setting that we find Amuko in. We find out more about her character, but we also find out how well she does in the face of danger and just how stubborn she is in this novel. She has some great character aspects and this character, Amuko, is by far the best character that I've read in fiction for quite some time. I would love to see Amuko in more novels and I'd actually like to see the character on the big screen. I think this novel would make a good movie just for that one character alone. But like all Goddard novels, it's not just one thing that's thrown into the mystery. We have many things. But in this novel, I think they're quite varied, maybe too varied, especially if you're new to Goddard and this is the first novel you've read. We have Sarin Gas. We have a man who may have died, who people think now is alive, that he faked his death. We also have climate change playing a part as well. And we have some dodgy business dealings going on. I mean, there's a lot to tie into this case and a lot to believe, you know, for the reader. I don't know that Goddard does it all so well in this novel. I think it's just too many very things trying to tie together. And I found that a little bit surprising and disappointing because I so much wanted to see a complex story that all made sense. And I just don't see that everything fits so well in this novel. One of the good things about this plot and the way this story is written is how Goddard develops the character's history and all the characters have a well-defined history. I like the way Goddard doesn't just give us chapters for history because that can distract from the story. He disperses the history of the characters seamlessly through the novel and I found that was so well done and I'm really appreciative of that because I don't want to read a Goddard novel or really any novel for that matter and have these big chunks of history that sometimes just distract the reader so much and often don't make sense to what the rest of the story is doing in the present time. First off, the main character Amuko Wada, a brilliant character. What else can you say? This has to be the best character that I've read for quite some time. I don't know how Goddard 
was able to craft his character so well. I don't know how long it took him to craft the character, but it just seems so inspired and so amazing. And she is such a unique character, I feel. I would really like to see her in more novels. I think her character deserves a bigger stage. There are so many aspects to Muko that are really fun and so well done. She's stoic, courageous, stubborn, very witty in her observations. So when we see things through her point of view, she often has very dry, witty thoughts. And I find that just quite clever. And it gives us so much of a look into her character, the way she handles things. Even very stressful moments when she has a gun pointed to her head, her thoughts come across still as dry and witty. And at other times when she's taking in a scene, she just focuses on the things she needs to focus on to propel the story ahead. There's not much frippery, you know, in this story, not much waste. I find that just amazing, really. And her character never shifted. It was always the same, so constant. Thumbs up, definitely, for this character. The best character, I think, in fiction for quite some time. Nick Miller, who's our other main character. Not as big as Muko in the story. And for me, not as big in general. He was a bit disappointing, really, even though he's there because he drives a key component of the plot along. And that's that he finds out that the man he thought was his father isn't his father. And the man that is his father, who everybody thought had died, may have faked his death. So that's part of the plot. And that's the reason why Nick Miller is there. Other than that, he's just forgettable. Every scene he's in, he just seems as a character out of his depth. Anything he does doesn't make an impact. I'm not sure if Goddard intended to have Nick play as big a role in the story as he did. I think that the Nick Miller character could have been, you know, a bit clipped, put into the shadows a bit and have Amuko take up more space in this novel. That would have made it a better read for me because Amuko really shown as a character. Nick Miller was just a bit of a downside to this story, really. If I could, I would give every Goddard book a five out of five, but that wouldn't be honest. And, you know, we shouldn't make authors work for our reviews, shouldn't we? I give this a four out of five. And the main reason for the four out of five is Amuko. That one character that Goddard invented is just superb. The best character in fiction I've seen for quite some time, probably years, really. It was good. It was complex. There were twists and turns. There were surprise happenings, you know, a bit of action. We expect all that in Goddard novels, especially one like this. But I think he kind of threw in too much to the story. He made it too complex with components that didn't link up as cleanly as I think he intended it to. 